Hello, it's Kat, and in today's tutorial, we'll be making this Valentine design in Adobe Illustrator, and I'll show you how to give it this nice paper cutout look using just a few simple tools and effects. To make it easier to follow along, I am providing a free starter file. You can find that link in the description below, and there you'll find the palette we're working with, the layer structure of the file, and these two shapes that I used for the hearts and stars. We'll start by creating the background using a radial gradient, then we'll create our stack of paper heart shapes using the blend tool. I'll show you how to use the inner glow effect as a shadow to make it look like the hearts are stacked in reverse order. And finally, we'll add some more depth with the cloud layers and the stars that will go on top. And for those, we'll go over the best settings for the drop shadow effect so that we get a nice soft blend and colorful shadows. So I'm here in the starter file. If you're following along, the first thing that we'll do is create the background rectangle. So I'll grab my rectangle tool, hover over the top left corner of your artboard, and you'll see this intersect if you have smart guides turned on. And if I click once, I can set the dimensions of my background rectangle. And I'm going to just match that to the artboard and make it 1080 by 1080 pixels. Now we have a white rectangle that is perfectly aligned to our artboard and the same size. With our base rectangle selected, I'm going to start making our gradient by hitting G on my keyboard to bring up the gradient tool. And I'm gonna open the gradient panel as well. In the gradient panel, I'm going to click this middle option to start a radial gradient. And then I'm going to double click the color stop to the far right of the slider. And that'll bring up my color picking tools. I'm going to pick from the swatches that we've predefined and you'll have these if you're using the starter file as well. I will start with the middle green here and then I will double click the far left slider and we're going to set it to this almost white, really light blue green. Now around the very edges of the artboard, I want a little bit of a darker vignette effect. So I'm going to click once on this slider and drag it in somewhere around 90%. And then hovering over the very edge, I'm going to click once underneath the gradient bar to add a new stop. Double clicking that, I will go ahead and switch it to my darkest green blue here. And now we'll just make some adjustments. I'm gonna drag this until the gradient looks a little smoother between the corner and where the color starts fading. And we'll do some further adjusting of the gradient once we have the rest of our elements in place. So I'll go ahead and close the gradient panel now. And switching to my select tool, I will grab our Valentine heart. I'm going to use the align shortcuts in my properties panel just to center that. And you'll see that it's behind our background. So this is where the layers come in. The background square here should be on our background layer. So I'm going to select that and drag it down to the background layer. And I'm going to lock that to make it easier to work with our foreground shapes. So now we have our heart on our heart layer and it's centered vertically and horizontally to our artboard. Now we just need to adjust the size. In the finished sample art, I have this outer heart at about 800 pixels wide. You're going to want to make sure that the maintain width and height box is selected here and double clicking in our width box. I'm just going to manually type in 800 pixels and that will go ahead and resize our heart. Now, as we go through the tutorial, you don't need to use the exact dimensions that I'm using for every single setting. You can adjust things to your visual taste. I'm just going to show you what settings I used to get the final outcome so that you have an idea of how to recreate it. You'll notice if you open the swatches palette right now that the outer heart is set to our lightest pink color here that I've provided. And now we're going to make a copy of this heart on top. So I want you to use the shortcut Control or Command C to copy it. And then we're going to use Control or Command F to make a perfect copy of that heart right on top. So if I switch here to my move tool and just show you, there are in fact two hearts that are just perfectly stacked. I'm going to undo that move. And now this inner heart, we're going to go with our red color, not the darkest color here, that will be for our shadows. So this one right here. And now we're going to make this heart smaller so that we can set it up for our blend. So I'll go and double click again in my properties panel on the width, and I'm gonna set this to around 200 pixels wide and press enter. So now we've got these two hearts and this will be the basis for our blend to get our heart steps. To make the blend, we're going to want to select both hearts. So click on the outer heart, holding down shift, you can click on the inner heart. Now these are both selected. We'll go up to the object menu down here to blend and make. Now the default setting for blend is going to be smooth color and we don't want that for this case. So I'm going to go to my toolbar and double click on the blend tool and that'll bring up the options. We're gonna switch this to specified steps and we only want three steps. That'll give us a total of five colors, including the inner heart and the outer heart and the three steps between it. Now that we have our heart steps made, we can go ahead and expand that blend. So with blend selected, I'll go to my object menu and down to expand. You can leave object and fill selected and click okay. Now this will give us our hearts. And if we go into our layers panel, you'll see that it's a group. So I'm just going to go ahead and ungroup that by going to our object menu and hitting ungroup, or you can use the keyboard shortcut shift control G or shift command G on a Mac. So now we have our five hearts of different colors. I found that just blending the colors from my darkest to my lightest color didn't give me quite the contrast or vibrancy in the middle colors that I wanted. So I have provided the palette that I used here for the final coloring. 
And I'm just going to use my direct select tool and click on this outer heart. Make sure you're clicking on the solid color part, not on the edges so that you grab the whole shape. And I'm just gonna go through these in order and apply the color steps as you see them laid out in the color group. Okay, so with that done, we've got our paper valentine stack. And what we need to do now is apply the inner glow effect to start making this look like there's some dimension. I'm just going to make sure I have all of my hearts selected and go up to the effect menu down here to stylize and we'll choose inner glow. Now when this pops up by default, your inner glow is going to be set to screen. We're going to change it to multiply so that it acts as a shadow instead of a highlight. I have my opacity set at 48%, the blur around 36 pixels, and you wanna make sure that it's coming from the edge, not the center. For the color, I've chosen the darkest red color that comes with the color palette if you're using the starter file here. And that's just a much darker version of the darkest red that we have. So this should blend nicely with all of our colors and clicking OK. That just applies it to each heart. And now if I click OK and deselect by clicking outside the artboard, you can see we've already got that nice paper cut stacked effect happening. Now, because these hearts are in a certain order with this one on top and the largest on bottom, that's why we're using inner glow here. You'll see in a moment when we add the clouds and the stars that for those you'll want to use drop shadow instead because they will actually be sitting on top and casting a shadow. Now that we have the effect applied to the hearts, I'm going to click in the selection column of the layers panel here and just hit Control or Command G to group those, collapse that layer and lock it, and we'll get started adding the stars to our Valentine design. So my star shape that I'm providing here in the starter file is already on the stars layer. I'm just going to drag it over here to the top left part of my heart. Again, you don't have to have these in the exact same position or the exact sizing that I have. You can go ahead and use artistic license on your own Valentine designs. And I'm going to hold down Alt and click and drag on that star to create a copy. And then with that still selected, I'm just going to scale that down a bit and adjust where it's sitting. I'll go ahead and make one more copy, again using Alt to click and drag. And I'll put the star over here on the bottom right portion of our heart. Next, we'll add the drop shadow effect to our stars so they look like they are on top of the heart and casting a shadow. So selecting my top left star here, I'm going to go into my appearance panel and click the effects, go to stylize and drop shadow. You can also do this from the effects menu at the top of your illustrator window. Now my settings for drop shadow are again going to be multiply mode. I have my opacity set at 68%. For this star, we want the shadow to fall to the right and to the bottom. So we're going to offset the X value 20 pixels, which will shift it to the right. And we will offset the Y value 20 pixels, which will shift it down 20 pixels. I have my blur set at 15. And for the color, I am again using one of my swatch colors here. It's just the mid-range pink, so it's right in the middle of our pinks palette, and you can go ahead and click OK on that. And now you'll see, if we deselect here, that that's casting a nice blurred shadow and makes it look like it's popping off the background of the heart. For the second star here, I'm going to use my eyedropper tool, clicking eye, and I'm just going to select the star that we just added the shadow to, and you can see that will add the drop shadow effect as well with the same settings that we applied to the first one. Now, because these particular stars fall over the heart, I've used pink for the shadow color because it will multiply nicely over the pink heart background. For this third star, I'm actually going to adjust it so that you can see this better. It's going to fall more over the blue background. So what I want to do is start out by again using my eyedropper tool and copying the shadow from the original shape. Now using my appearance panel, I'm going to click on drop shadow to bring this effect back up and clicking it in the color box, I'm going to go to my color swatches and I'm going to switch this to our medium blue green and click okay. And so now you have the blue shadow, which looks better over the blue background. When you have the pink over the blue, it kind of gives you a purple effect. So it starts to look a little weird. So just keep in mind that you want to coordinate your shadow color with whatever color the background is that the shadow will be falling on. Okay, so now we're done with the stars. I'm going to move on to the cloud shapes. So we'll go into our layers panel and lock the stars layer, and then just click once to make sure that you are on the clouds layer so that everything is stacking properly. The cloud shapes are going to be completely made of ellipses. So we'll go up here and grab our ellipse tool, which is L on your keyboard. I'm going to open my swatches panel and just make sure I'm on the pure white color for the clouds. And holding down shift as I drag a circle out, 
I'm going to get a perfect circle that way. So we'll just start with one here. You can see that the drop shadow effect is still being applied because the last shape that I drew had a drop shadow applied. Illustrator is applying that again to this circle. As I'm making my clouds, I don't want to see that. So I'm just going to go into my appearance panel, make sure drop shadow is highlighted and click this trash can button to remove that. Now with my original circle still selected, I'm going to use my selection tool. Holding down Alt, I'm just going to start dragging out copies of the circle to roughly create my cloud shape. So I'm just making a bunch of copies by using the Alt drag trick here. And then I'm going to resize and move them around until I get an organic cloud shape that I'm happy with. You mostly wanna pay attention to the tops because we will be combining all of these into a full shape. So I'll speed this part up a little bit to show you how I created this first cloud and then we will set the drop shadow and move on to layering the other clouds on top. So once I have a cloud shape in the bottom corner of the Valentine design that I'm happy with, I just wanna make sure that the cloud is covering the entire bottom left corner of the artboard here. And then I'm going to drag with my selection tool to grab all of these. I can do that because the rest of these layers are locked. And when you have all your cloud circles selected, you want to go into your properties panel here under Pathfinder and click the Unite button. Now you have one cloud shape that we can apply a shadow to. So go ahead and undo that move. And I'm going to start once again by sampling the shadows that we've set up on our stars. So I'll hit I to get my eyedropper tool out and just click once on that star. Now you'll see that we need to change the direction of the shadow and the color. Once again, the cloud shadows will be mostly over the blue background. So what I wanna do is go to my appearance panel, click once on drop shadow, and we'll change the color first. So going to our color swatches, I'll just grab my medium teal here, okay. And now we wanna change the direction. So for this, instead of the shadow falling below the cloud, we want it to fall to the top of the cloud. So in the Y offset, instead of 20 pixels down, we're going to shift it 20 pixels up by making it negative 20. I click that. Now you'll see that it's going in the right direction. So with the clouds at the bottom, the goal that we have is to make it look like the shadow is falling toward the center of the design. So that looks right for this cloud. We'll go ahead and click OK. I'll be using the same technique with the ellipse tool to make the other cloud shapes. I'm going to make sure that I have deselected the cloud that I've already applied the drop shadow to. Just go in here and remove drop shadow so that when I start drawing my next ellipse, I won't have that in my way. This just speeds up your workflow a little bit and helps you see your cloud together as a solid shape. If the shadows are on there, it can get a little confusing visually. So as I'm creating my second large cloud that is going to cover the bottom right of our Valentine design, I wanna make sure that it does overlap here in the center with our original cloud so that we can put a shadow right there to really help give our design dimension. The goal for these larger corner clouds is just to frame our design. So you'll notice that on the left, it starts a bit higher and tapers down to the center. And on the right, we have the exact opposite so that they kind of echo the V that follows the bottom of our heart. Now that I have the circles in for the next cloud, I'm going to drag a selection around those. I'm going to hit shift and click once on our original cloud since we don't want that in our selection. And again, I'll use the Pathfinder shortcut here and click unite to make that one shape. And now hitting our eye tool to get our eyedropper, going to copy the shadow from our first cloud, going into our appearance panel, we will bring up the drop shadow settings box. And for this cloud, because it's sitting on the right, we wanna go ahead and make sure that that offset is a negative 20. As I click there, you can see what that does. So now the shadow direction is going toward the center of our design. And you can see that it's got that nice little overlap on our first set of clouds. So we'll click okay there. And now I will just go ahead and add the two smaller clouds to the very bottom corners using the same technique that I used to create the original clouds. So I'll speed that part of the process up for you. So for these front two clouds, I've actually just drawn one shape over here here, duplicated it again by hitting alt and dragging and just rotated it around so that it gives a little bit of variety. For these clouds, you're going to want to match the drop shadow effects to the two that we've already created for background clouds. So on the left side, I've just gone ahead and sampled from this cloud. And on the right side, we've sampled from this cloud. And that gives you the shadows going in all the right directions. Now, this is all of the basic pieces with all of their effects applied. The next few steps are kind of what I call polish, where we go ahead and make a few adjustments to, to the overall composition and possibly adjust some shadows to be darker or lighter, just depending on what looks best. So the first polish step I'm gonna do is apply a clipping mask to clip these clouds to the artboard. I'm gonna make sure that everything else is still locked and I'm on my clouds layer. We'll come up here to our rectangle tool and just draw our rectangle. Make sure that it's 1080 by 1080 pixels and again, perfectly centered to your artboard. The appearance does not matter if you're going to use a shape as a clipping mask. 
So with that square down, I'm going to grab all four of my clouds and the mask, and I will use the shortcut control or command seven to create a mask. And now you can see these clouds are nicely trimmed to our artboard. I'll go ahead back into our layers panel. I'm going to lock the clouds and unlock the stars and the hearts. I think that the design will look better if the stars and the hearts are vertically centered between the clouds and the top of the Valentine design. So I'm going to just grab these and holding down shift so that it moves in one axis. I'm just going to move these up until it looks visually right to me. You can also do this using your arrow keys if you hold down shift and up arrow or down arrow. By default, that will move whatever you have selected in 10 pixel increments. So that can be really handy. I think that looks about right to me. Now I'm going to go back and unlock all of my layers so that I can make a few adjustments here and there. Using my selection tool, I'm going to grab my background rectangle and I'm going to hit G to bring my gradient annotation tool back up. I want to move this and squish it a bit so that it looks like the glow is centered around the center of the heart. I'll click and drag on the bar here and that will move the entire gradient. And then I'm going to grab this node at the top to squish that gradient down just a little bit so that it's mostly on my artboard. And you can also grab the end point here and you can make the gradient bigger or smaller. I wanna make it slightly bigger because I want those dark corners kind of to appear at just the edge of the artboard so that it gives a nice vignette effect. And I wanna make sure that I'm seeing the lightest glow here at the center of the heart. So I may even just drag this node a bit and you can see what that's doing is just moving where that first color starts. So if we move it around here, then I get more of the light blue behind the center points of the heart. Now these are all just, like I said, polish adjustments that you can make based on your own taste and your own design. The other thing that I did in my final design was go and adjust the cloud shadows. I wanted these to look like they were a bit further away from the heart. And the way that I did that was going into my drop shadow. I just went ahead and adjusted this blur to about 30 pixels and that softens it and makes it go a little bit further into the design. So you can see that visually it gives the illusion that the cloud shape has moved up a bit. I also did that with the front clouds and went ahead and softened the color just a bit. So on this, I move that up to about 24 pixels. And for the color, you don't have to stick to the color swatches that we had. Uh, for this, I want the front clouds to be just a little bit more colorful. So I'll pick something a bit lighter and saturated and I'll go ahead and grab that new effect and copy it over to the left. And then we just need to make sure it's pointing in the right direction toward the center of the design. And on this here, again, I will just adjust the blur so that it looks a bit further on top. And there you have it. You can, of course, continue to make any adjustments you like. You can use this technique with any shape or any color palette. I hope that it was helpful. And if you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comments for me. I'm always happy to help. And if you'd like to download the final tutorial file and the project guide for this, you can find that linked in the description below. As always, have a great day and happy illustrating.